Hey, hello internet, uh, Andrew here with Rural Family Kids and today I have the pleasure of doing a ride along uh, with, with Officer Scott Neves. Now, you're also not just an officer, right? You are mm -hmm. a sergeant. Chief. Chief, wow. I came late today. I am more embarrassed <laughs> now that I, okay, anyway. Do you want and to then, start over? No, again? no, we're, we'll <laughs> okay. keep this in here. So it's, it's, it's playful banter. Um, and, then, and then his daughter, Maddie. Right? Yes. Who actually, she served with me last year at Royal Family Kids Camp. So uh, today, we're, we're, what, we're, what are we looking to do today? Um, I guess we're going to have a conversation about Royal Family Kids yeah. and um, my daughter's involvement and how we support her in trying to achieve her goals. That's right. That's right. So I guess, well, let's just, actually, uh, Maddie, will you introduce yourself a little bit? Can you tell the camera a little bit about who you are and why you're involved with Royal Family Kids? Yeah, um, my name is Maddie Neves. I am a student at LCC and um, a senior in high school this year. Um, I really enjoy helping the community and foster care is important to me because my youngest brother was in foster care and we adopted him. And so that is why I got involved with Royal Family Kids Camp to help other foster children in need. Okay, and then and then uh, Scott, I, should I call you Scott? Scott's that? fine, Okay. Absolutely okay. Fine. What what is your involvement and what so what are, what do you do? What is your involvement? Why do you support this? Um, well, we as uh, Madison just said, we adopted uh, a foster kid. Okay. Uh, wanted to give him a chance in in life, and and he's just been a joy uh, to our family. Uh, and uh, Royal Family Kids is an awesome program, uh, and uh, I support my daughter' uh, involvement there and her volunteer time uh, to make it happen. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So um, today we're going to talk a little bit more, but we are we are doing a ride along, right? So we're going. To, are we driving around the streets of wherever Castle Rock? You, wherever you want to go. Okay. Well, I mean, let's just let's just see where the day takes us, and sure. we'll we'll go from there. All right. Sure. So you you said you were going to show us the highlights of of, of Castle Rock, yeah. or just being an officer in Castle um, Rock? Both. Okay. Both. Okay. Uh, Castle Rock's uh, an awesome city to live and to work in. Got a great uh, group of guys that work for me. Uh, all the officers here have been here for a very long time. Uh, I've been 17, 18 years here, and all the guys, 90% uh, of, of our force is uh, that long longevity that they wow. like it here, they want to be here, they're committed to the citizens and the community. Okay. So, and then we've got our department has a lot of involvement in the community as a whole. We do a lot of volunteer work. Uh, we've had officers that have been involved uh, in sports, coaching teams, um, Boy Scouts, uh, doing uh, some mission work, okay. uh, doing lots of lots of other stuff, community projects. Uh, so we we have a, a great group of people that work for us. So this is the. Uh, the high school's over, uh, right over here. Okay. Uh, this is the North County Recreational Area, uh, where they have uh, multiple uh, little league fields, uh, baseball fields, softball fields, and then uh, they have a boat launch and stuff over here. So Scott, as a as a law enforcement officer, do you, I guess from your perspective, do you see a need for people to really start investing in children who are in foster care? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything that we can do to support uh, children, uh, help them make uh, good decisions, uh, help them be better citizens, uh, it's critical. Um, you know, as, as they get older and turn into adults, uh, if they don't have good upbringing, if they, if they haven't had, uh, you know, good parenting, uh, taught to make good decisions, they're going to end up meeting me more frequent than I really want to meet them, and, right. and ultimately, it's to take care of, um, to take care of the citizens and to grow good citizens for the community. Okay, so you say it's critical, and I, I would wholly agree with that. Do you think that a a program like Royal Family Kids Camp can actually make an impact with a with with kids? Even though we just get, you no, know, the argument has been we. We only spend a week with them. Do you think there's some lasting, uh, I guess, change in that? Oh, oh, it's it's a huge impact. Any any kids program or any program that affects changes in kids, even if it's a week, even if it's a day, uh, it has lasting impact. 
Uh, I've seen that uh, multiple times myself, uh, being involved in, um, I taught D.A.R.E. for uh, many years. I still have kids coming up to me and that's been 20 plus years ago that remember me and remember the impact that I made on their life. Um, I remember D.A.R.E. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. Um, you know, I do uh, volunteer at, um, at uh, various programs throughout the year uh, and, and truly any positive interaction that you can have has a long lasting impact on people. You know stuff that will you you may never ever see and you may never ever know that until you know 20 years later they come showing up on your doorstep and want to talk to you and tell you what an impact they, that they made. Right. So that goes with a the theme of something that I, I got to talk to the director Jess McLeod with is like through camp and I'm sure you got the experience this Maddie that we we get to plant seeds of hope because we don't know what's going to happen in the future as, as they look back on these memories. Maddie last year you you went to camp do you can you think of anything that like a memory that really touched your heart, uh, at least really, really affirmed why you were a part of this? I think, like, the biggest thing that kind of affirmed it for me is just seeing, like, from the first day to the last day, just kind of seeing these kids, like, open up and come out of their shells mm. and kind of start, like, trusting people. And, you know, like, the first day, a lot, like, we had one girl in our group who was really timid and scared, and she, like, didn't really want to interact with anybody, and she, like, hid a lot. And then by the end of the week, she was just out and enjoying her time and she made a lot of friends with the other kids and we just really got to see like her personality and she just you could tell that she felt safe enough to be able to have fun so that that it, that touched you you got to see this young girl just come out of her shell I, you know what i love about that maddie is that let's see so you're a senior this year that means last year you were a junior Right, and you you are getting involved in this. That means uh, you don't have to be an adult really to to be a part of this to further this. Um, I guess like would you would you encourage other high schoolers to get involved with this? Absolutely, I think it's a great way to not only serve your community, but I think you gain a lot from it as well as like getting to give something to the kids. I think it's a great way to help yourself grow as well as helping other people grow. But the, you know, the point that Maddie was talking about is uh, I usually see the kids on the opposite side. Yes. Yeah. We're the ones, law enforcement is usually the ones that take custody of the kids mm -hmm. and, and get them into the foster care system. So we see some of the um, houses that they come out of, some of the lives that they come out of, uh, and it's it's pretty sad. It's it's truly heartbreaking and, and the, uh, the things that these kids have, have suffered through and you know anything to bring positive um, relations to their life, some some hope, some joy. Um, they need that. They need yeah. that connection. They need that time to see that people truly care about them uh, and are there just to take care of them. Yeah. I I'm hearing in both of your stories in 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 your involvement, and especially from both of your perspectives, I'm hearing that community is such an important thing because we know that these kids they may have some um i guess what gaps in their experience that should be healthy but i think what i'm hearing is that from from both of your perspectives there are opportunities especially through this program that we can step in fill some of those gaps to at least make a positive impact even if they were born into a really negative situation if if you were hearing someone that was you know really interested in helping because this, this draws like they like the idea of community but they were like timid to even get involved what were your what would your encouragement be to them i guess to uh i guess to continue to be a community that supports foster care kids well again it's it's you're you know it's been said many times it takes a village to you know to raise a child and you know it's there's these kids have suffered through a lot in their life you know if, if we want them to be successful want them to grow up to be uh, good parents to raise good families to be good citizens to the community we have to show them that we have to take care of them and show them that that there's more than than darkness that there's more than um, suffering more than mistreatment out there that people truly care about them and and will actually uh, you know love them and, yeah. and take care of them and and I don't 
you know, we're raising generations after generations of broken people, and, and those broken people raise another generation of broken people, and we yeah. have to stand up and, and, and stop that continuing uh, brokenness in here. And the only way to do that is to reach out and show people love, caring, and, you know, the people who truly care about them and them to be good people. So you're observing from a law enforcement side that we have... You said broken people who are raising broken people. Oh, like you know, there, there's that saying of hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. Right. And it takes those of us who are aware to even do the smallest actions to love and encourage and foster um, just hope in people to break those cycles. Mm -hmm. And what you so and you kind of pointed out. So, Maddie, you're involved really in kind of a. Um, I guess with with working with Royal Family Kids Camp, you would be involved in almost kind of like the. The front end, I guess, as kids are trying to like trying to grow up, right? And then Scott, you're you're talking about kind of like the back end of things, as sometimes you have to enter into homes and of of, of kids or broken homes that mm -hmm. are going through some things, and there is much help that's needed on all all gamuts of of that equation right now. Right, absolutely, and that's thirty years. You know, I totally understand it. We can't arrest our way out of out of these problems. So any prevention programs, any prevention strategies that we can get in to help provide, uh, you know, they had talk about risk and protective factors, and the, the more protective factors that you have, uh, the better that the, uh, you know, the people, the kids are going to turn out to be. And, yeah. and truthfully, that's the connection that I see is, is uh, with Royal Family Kids is that ability to build good relationships positive relationships, mentoring relationships, and, you know, build those protective factors into the kids. And what you just said, kind of, it's a good launching point for the public to know that uh, this, so this is 2020 right near, right now, and this summer is going to be our third uh, camp for Cal Calis and Waukayakum counties. But, so that's just one week out of the year, but we are looking to launch, you, you talk about mentoring, and other forms of investment, we're looking to launch a, a mentor club that um, that we, we will need help with. So just communicating with uh, the director, <laughs> what we learned is that though we, we have, we we're gonna have three camps this year, we need way more volunteers to be able to launch an ongoing uh, mentor program throughout the school year. So if there are people who are watching this, um, we, you're hearing it for, here from, from Scott and Maddie that like, it, it takes it takes more people to really start to make an impact to leave more opportunities to, to lead to plant more seeds of hope in these in these kids and they're they're worth it 